Hi, it's Andrew. Today, I would like to teach you how to do synthetic division with the following example of x cubed minus 15x squared plus 75x minus 125, all being divided by x minus 5. So the first thing I'd like to do is kind of set up my um, synthetic division table. And I basically will know the number of columns inside of this table. It will be based off of the highest power of x. So if the highest power is 3, just add 1 to it and then you'll have a total of four columns here. Okay, now that being the case, you wanna make sure that you have in your polynomial function here, you wanna make sure that you have uh, decreasing x terms. In other words, you have an x cubed, you have an x squared, you have an x, and then you have no x term. If one of them were to be missing, imagine this term were to be missing, you would have x cubed and then you jump to x. You need an x squared term though, so what you would do is you would add into the equation zero x squared because this is basically zero, right? Zero times anything is gonna be zero, but at least you'll know the coefficient, okay, of that x squared term, and that's the whole point. What you have to do is you have to identify the coefficients. So the coefficient of the x cubed term is a one, so you plug that in in the first spot. The coefficient of the x squared term is going to be a negative 15, so plug that in the second. The next one is gonna be a 75, and then the last, the constant term, is gonna be a negative 125. Perfect. So you took care of your dividend. Now you're going to look at your divisor. You're going to take this divisor and set it equal to zero. So x minus five equaling zero, and then you're going to add five to it, okay? X is going to be equal to five. And what this tells us now is that that value of five is the value that we're going to plug in here. And what that means now is we have a fully filled first row of our table. Now we can just do the procedure. So first you're going to take this first coefficient, drop it all the way down. There's nothing to plug in here. That's why it's a red box. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this value of one, multiply it by five. That result gets plugged in here into the adjacent cell. Then you're gonna add these terms together. Negative 15 plus five is gonna be a negative 10. Then what you're gonna do is repeat the process. Take the negative 10, multiply it by five, and put it in this adjacent cell for negative 50. Then add these terms together. Negative 50 and a positive 75 should be a positive 25. Then what you're gonna do is repeat the process. Take the 25, multiply it by five, and plug that answer into the next adjacent cell, and that should be 125 positive. Then you add these terms together, and you get a value of zero, and you're done. Now, if this wasn't zero, if it was a value of like 10, it doesn't matter, you're still done. Once you get the value here, you're gonna be finished. Then, what you wanna do is keep in mind what these values now represent. This is your remainder, this is your constant term, this will be the coefficient of the x term, this will be the coefficient of the x squared term, and dot, 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 the pattern would continue on out depending upon how many columns you had here in your table. Oh, we start with remainder, then constant, and then this pattern uh, continues. So we're basically almost done. These are gonna represent the coefficients of the quotient, okay, of the answer, the answer to this problem, but you gotta make sure you do one quick thing. Always check to make sure you identify the coefficient of the x term in your divisor. Whatever that term is, in this problem it's a one, you're gonna divide each of these terms except for the remainder by one. Now obviously dividing everything by one doesn't really do anything, so you can kinda of skip that step, but I don't really want you to skip it. Uh, the reason being is because, imagine this is now a two, a two x. Well, now you know what to do. You're not gonna get the problem wrong. All right, so I always want you to think about that step at the end. But since it's a one, you can kind of quote unquote skip it because it really won't change anything. So now you can write out your quotient, okay? So it's gonna be one x squared, or in other words, just x squared. Then it's gonna be minus 10x. Then it's gonna be plus 25. No x there, because that's the constant term. And then plus now your remainder, whatever the sign is here, it's a zero, so you can assume it's you know plus zero. And you're gonna take that remainder, and you're going to then put it over your divisor x minus five, right? The divisor is the thing that is being divided into the thing over here, that's the dividend. Don't you love the terms? I love the terms. Anyway, um, so this is technically now your quotient. This is the answer. That's the answer when you take, you know, this polynomial and divide it by that. Now you can simplify this though, because zero over anything is just nothing, right? So you can simplify this then down to just x squared minus 10x plus 25. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. So that would be your answer. 
Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this helped. And if it did, like, subscribe, and maybe even, if you can, tell some of your classmates. That's the best way to help us out. Um, and we'd love to help you out with more problems. By the way, we have thousands. Check out our channel, okay? Because we have thousands of problems out there. Not only in mathematics here, but we got physics. I was going to say physics. I'm like, no, this isn't physics. Um, we got uh, stuff in physics, chemistry. We got a whole bunch of stuff out there. And we solve specific problems because guess what you're going to see on your test? Specific problems. We'd love to help you with more. Take care.